Hello everyone, welcome back to another vlog. Before we get into this vlog, I was just sat here editing and I do wanna put a little bit of a trigger warning because I, later in the video you'll see, I speak about my postpartum experience and kind of how I've been having like the baby blues and I think, I'm not 100% sure and I don't wanna self-diagnose, but I'm pretty sure I'm suffering from postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression. If you are in, the like thick of things right now and you don't want to hear anything sad i just want to put this disclaimer because i do get emotional later and um yeah the last thing i want is for anyone that is not in a great state to just then feel worse um <laughs> So yeah, putting that out here. I'm gonna try my best to put little time stamps throughout the video so you can maybe skip over those things if you don't want to. You can scroll at the bottom to see the sections of the vlog. I try to do those in most vlogs unless I'm extremely busy and do not have the time, but I usually try to do that. And seeing as this is a pretty big <laughs> mental health vlog, the perfect company to work with is BetterHelp for this video and they're just the perfect paid partnership. So I wanna thank them for being there for me and for continuously working with me and helping to support my family over the past, I don't know, four years. They're amazing, I love them. I'm sure most of you are aware of BetterHelp and the fact that I talk about them all the time, but if you are struggling like I am currently, they're a great option if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what you're looking for. I will have a link with a discount code in my description, but they are an online community of therapists that are there for your needs. Depending on what you're looking for, you just sign up, you fill out a little survey questionnaire, and then you will be matched with someone based off of what you're looking for. And if you don't love the person you're matched with, you can switch without any fees and no one will be offended you want to find someone that you really connect with and value because it is a two-way street and you are talking about something so personal and i don't think you need a therapist if you're only struggling with something as serious as depression or whatever i think just in general for everyone it is so healthy and so good to talk to somebody i'm such an advocate for this because we all go through stuff in life. You don't need to have anything diagnosed in order to reach out for help. Everyone struggles with stress and anxiety and this economy is rough. So I highly recommend it. You can do it from the comfort of your own home and you can sign up online and talk to your therapist. It's not really like a um, place to chat, but it's more of like a organize your appointments and do all that kind of fun stuff. It just makes it easy for you. There are group sessions. There's a lot that's offered online. So I highly recommend you check it out and you can get 10% off your first month subscription if you go to my link, which is betterhelp.com slash Chantomo, which is my last name, betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Chantomo to get 10% off of your first month. Highly recommend it. And yeah, the link will be listed down below. So without further ado, let's get into this video. I love you guys and thank you so much for all of your support as always. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to a vlog. And as I was just about to put my hair up, I realized the postpartum hair loss has commenced. That's great. One of my favorite things. Oh, hello. Oh, I didn't know you were coming. Um, postpartum is you start to lose all your hair <laughs> but it's because during pregnancy if you didn't know this um, you don't lose any hair so it just like accumulates and then you have like really healthy nails and hair growth and then postpartum everything just whoop dips I also tried out a new face self tan thing and I actually hate it it's super blotchy so I will not be recommending this <laughs> it's not so bad in certain lighting, but in person, it's just not cute. And I just realized I'm gonna place an order for Nutrafol because I did that like a year and a half ago. I started taking those supplements and I found it helped my hair so much. I wasn't like newly postpartum. I never took anything last time. I just let it kind of grow back in. But this time I know it's gonna make a difference. So I'm gonna order some more of those because here you can really see the receding hairline and just like anytime I brush my hair, the amount of clumps of hair that just come out is is quite frightening to be honest <sighs> i don't love that the sun will come out tomorrow <laughs> bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow i am t 
tired. <laughs> Y'all, I cannot even explain to you how the past few weeks have been feeling. I feel like I, oh, I needed a step back from life. When it rains, it pours, right? And we just, we laugh through the trauma. We figure out ways to cope. I, this past week, I think was my breaking point to the point where I was like, I, I need to figure this out shiz out because I definitely feel like I'm suffering with like postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression and I just did not fully see the extent of it until this week because there's a lot of stuff just like in my personal life that's going on but then a lot of stuff with work and on top of all of that which is stressful just in and of itself. I have a newborn baby and I'm going through all the postpartum hormones, the fluctuations, and I went from being like on a high high after delivering during the summer, felt like the highest high ever, to probably one of the lowest lows I felt in a very long time. And then it was just like one thing after the other. And this week I was like, I'm so done. I cannot live like this for the rest of my life. Like, I need to figure this crap out. Um, I had a little cry sesh, felt really good, spoke to my friends, spoke to my some of my family, reached out to my therapist again. My like favorite ther therapist in the world is on mat leave. I don't wanna start new with someone else. Please, do you have a colleague that they could just look over my file that's already there. We're gonna see, if not, I'll just, I'll find somebody else. Like I definitely do think I need to find someone again for postpartum because I can't struggle like this alone. And it feels good to talk to my family and friends. It feels good to talk to Dan, but like Dan's also going through it, right? Like there's a lot of stuff that we're dealing with. And although it feels so good to be a unit, we're still going through this together. And we're still like, it's tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's freaking tough. The first thing that my friend told me to do is to write down just three things you're grateful for. So that every day, just starting a habit again. This is something I used to do all the time and then just fell off. Or just thinking it, like what am I grateful for? Right now, my health, my family, and my job. These three things just off the top of my head, things that I'm very grateful for and things that I love dearly, dearly, dearly. Friends and family kind of go together because I have a lot of friends that are like family. Yeah, I'm just like, I am drowning. I'm in a free fall and I can't stop and I don't know what to do and I'm screaming and all at the same time, I'm kind of in a denial a little bit. Yeah, I feel better today, but who knows what I feel like in like a few hours. I, I did my makeup, I hung out with my kids, I went for coffee with my friend. I went for a walk. Dan's out for a bike right now. We're just kind of like taking it day by day. <sighs> but yeah, I might actually just, if I don't get a reply from my therapist, because like, like I said, she's on mat leave. I don't know if she's checking her emails or not. I'll probably just like sign up with someone again through BetterHelp because um, that's what I did last time. And it was really helpful. It's just, I'm such an advocate for mental health. Yet when I really need it, I'm like, oh my God, I only want like the people that I know. It makes... Here's the thing, it does make me nervous a little bit with this being my job. And I know, I know with therapists, it's so confidential and like it's really bad if anything were to ever get out and it wouldn't. But just talking about specific things in my life to someone who I don't know very well at all, like starting fresh does give me anxiety on its own so that's where i struggle because i know it's professional but like there's still a human being behind the screen if you're if i'm doing it virtually or if i'm talking to someone in person like that's still a human who could search me up on youtube on instagram could have like a view of me or who knows who i am already the great thing about my current therapist who i've been with for literally like seven years is that she was with me from like the beginning, so I feel like I grew with her. So she didn't even know who I was when I started. And I'm not saying that everyone knows who I am, but like it does happen a lot where I live. And it's not like there's anything in my life that I need someone to like sign an NDA for or anything like that. It's more just like there's things that happen I want to be able to talk to my therapist about that are, like affect me, that involve other people. But I'm nervous that like 
this person will then like have a view of other people i don't know it's like such a weird feeling because i'm a public figure and i know that comes with the job but it just it, it's an added layer of stress that makes me a bit more hesitant to reach out like i know i'm going to because i need i need fucking help but it does make me nervous like any doctor's office or thing i've gone to in the past few years like they know who i am it's either the receptionist or the doctor themselves or the nurse and it's really nice because i feel like everyone is so sweet to me but again like i don't know what people say behind my back i don't and i don't really care i was actually listening to an interview with aspen ovard because i love her and i know it's very like 50 50 online what people think but i really really like her and a lot of the way that i parent and the way that i have like structured my life is based off of things she's shared in the past like when she had her first baby right before i had mine i based a lot of things off of stuff she shared so i don't know i just even though she's younger than me i do look up to her in certain ways she mentioned on a podcast that to her like people's opinions of her that don't know her are so irrelevant because for exactly that they don't know her and like it just doesn't bother her whereas people in her life like in her personal life she'll take those opinions to heart because like she cares about those people and she cares about their opinion and i feel like i'm kind of the same way i definitely am more sensitive than she is based off of like you know what she shares online um because like i can't deny that like hate still does get to me because i do care still like how i'm perceived and i am a people pleaser and i want people to like feel happy and like like my stuff like i put a lot of effort and work into my content and i love what i do but sometimes i struggle and i just i find it hard when there is hate but at the end of the day like deep down i don't really care that much because i'm like people see things online and i do the same and i'll like come up with a conclusion in my head based off of what i'm seeing when i don't even know the person i even catch myself doing it and having to remind myself certain things or if i catch myself comparing myself to someone else being like oh like why can't i do that or like why is this happening for this person and not for me and it's like that's so unhealthy and i do that in real life too where i just compare and then i realize i'm doing it and i take a step back and i'm like okay where am i insecure right now and like why am i looking at what i'm insecure about with other people and like comparing my insecurity with like something that they have so that's when i need to like reflect on myself and so i know when people do that to me that's probably how they're feeling and what they're thinking because like i'm not in a good place right now i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm struggling but have things been worse before yes will things get better absolutely and in 10 years from now i'm gonna look back at this time and be like lol remember that you know like i look back at struggles that i was having in my early 20s and i'm like that was nothing like if i thought that was stressful so i know it's all relative but for right now i'm struggling but i still would never like go and create hate with other people so i think it's like people that go and do that whether that be online or in real life or just like bully or gossip or whatever i feel like it stems just from a place of like insecurity and they're just sad people because i know that feeling even though i don't go out and like do it not because like i'm better than anyone it's just not like my natural instinct i still will like think negative thoughts and like think negatively in general because i'm in a negative headspace so when i'm in a positive headspace I, like i am I, nothing can bring me down summer 2023 was like the best summer for me up until this summer because the summer was amazing in different ways but last summer i was like i was in the best shape of my life i was sleeping amazing i was eating amazing i felt so good i felt like i finally figured out who i was after being a mom and what my interests were i was doing a million activities i was so connected with my son and with daniel and i had like this amazing friend group and we were just doing all these fun things all the time i just felt like so amazing and then fall came around and i was like again just so happy went on this amazing trip got pregnant like everything was just so good and so when i delivered and i still felt amazing people were kind of like that's weird and i'm like why do you have to suffer when you have a baby and it's like no but like you're very much on cloud nine i feel like it hasn't hit you yet which 
I don't think this happens to everyone, but I think for me, because I was on such a high high, when reality did set in and like it was back to school and we were no longer seeing all our friends all the time, the weather was getting colder, we were stuck inside more, the sun's going down earlier, like everything kind of just got a little bit more real. I was back at work, I couldn't just focus on my baby like I did all summer. Like all I did all summer was just be with my baby. Now it's like, okay, I can't be with my baby all day every day because I have to get work done. And I felt a lot of guilt for that and I was frustrated with that. That sucked because I felt like I was crashing and then like all these things kept happening in our personal lives that I was like, oh my God, it's just like one thing after the other. And I was like, the water's coming up here, it's coming up here and I am not, I'm not getting up there. So I just cracked, but it's okay because we all do sometimes, but it's just tough, you know? It's like, I love, I love my life and I'm so grateful for everything. And then it's like, why do I feel like such crap? Like, why do I feel so anxious and down? And then sometimes, like right now I'm feeling emotional, like I might cry and I'm actually like happy that I'm feeling this way because like for so long I was just numb. And I'm like, why am I not feeling happy? Why am I not feeling sad? Like, why am I not feeling anything? And that was a little scary. And that's when I was like, M maybe this is depression. Like I don't, I've never suffered really with postpartum depression. For myself last time, it was a lot of postpartum anxiety. This, I feel like I don't even know what it is and I'm self-diagnosing and like, I know that's not okay. I'm just like reading books and seeing things online and like, maybe this is what it is, but this is why I feel like I need to speak to someone ASAP because like just even seeing what's on my plate for the next few weeks for work even like if this was last summer I would have been like oh great like schedule it in like I'll, I'll film and shoot on this day I'll edit this day I'll like I organize whatever now I like see these things coming in and I'm like I can't even think like I have to set an alarm to brush my teeth so seeing it it's like I'm grateful but I'm overwhelmed and I'm tired because my baby sleeps really well, but I don't sleep really well. And I just feel, sometimes I just feel like I'm failing my family and my friends and myself. And it's just really hard sometimes to feel like you have the world on your shoulders. And like, I know like there's people that have it way worse than I do. And that's why I feel guilty for even feeling this way. But I know. It's okay to struggle as well. And I know once my hormones balance out, it'll be better. But like, I need, I'm actually happy that I'm like feeling this. Because for so long, I was like, why can I not cry? The other day I was talking to my sister. And I was like, I just like, we, we haven't even come back with the podcast. Cause I'm like, I can't, I can't even focus on anything. And like we had all these plans to do stuff and like I feel like I'm letting her down. Anyways, and I just told her, I was like, sometimes I'm so happy with my life and I love my kids, but sometimes I wish I could like go back to just being a kid for one day just to like live in that moment. And like, sometimes I just want my mom. Like I was telling her, I was like, sometimes I just want mommy, you know, like, and I'm a mom and like, wh why do I feel that way? <laughs> my sister was so amazing and she was so sweet. And she kept saying like, Alex, imagine your kids felt this way and you know you could help them. Like, why aren't you like, just reach out to her. <sighs> and like, I, I know it's okay to feel this way. <laughs> Trust me, like, I don't need any validation. I don't need any sympathy. Like, this is just me expressing myself because I don't know. <laughs> I don't also want to give this image like I'm so happy all the time because I felt so happy for so long and then I just crashed and I was like, what the heck? And I'm like grasping at straws. Like I'm trying to do these things that help me every day. I'm like, I'm filling out my cup a little bit. I'm exercising, which does help so much. Like exercising helps my mental health so much. Um, listening to a podcast or reading a bit of a book or something like where I just take an hour for myself in the day. I just, I don't think that's enough. Like I think I actually need to talk to somebody and I just need to know what to do like from a professional standpoint standpoint because I don't want to keep living in, in this phase of like I'm letting everyone in my life down like just everyone I'm happy that I like feel like I could cry because that is awesome and I know a lot of people like when I watch videos and they're like oh my god I didn't want to cry on the internet I'm like I don't 
for me, I don't give a shit. Like crying is such a natural emotion and it's like not something to be ashamed of. Like I actually really like crying. If I'm feeling like sad or if I wanna watch a sad movie to cry, like I feel so good after. So I don't think there should be any shame to crying on the internet ever or crying in general ever. I think it should be normalized. So I'm not sorry for crying on the internet. Like at all, this is I'm a human being. I'm very proud of how far I've come and I'm very proud of everything in my life. Yeah, I just wanted to express this because I do know a lot of moms follow me and I do know I've been really showing the positives, which I want people to feel like this is a positive space, but I also want you to feel like I also struggle and it's okay to struggle and we're all struggling and dealing with it in our own way and we're all trying our best and like, I want you to feel heard if you are struggling because when I'm struggling, yes, I like to watch people that are like happy, living their best lives and like doing great. Like it does lift my mood, but it also sometimes makes me feel bad. So here's a little dose of reality. <laughs> Not that I'm hiding it. I just was like very confused up until this week. And I was like, okay, I need to talk about this because I lost. I love you guys. It is a Saturday morning. Arkham's playing with my makeup upstairs. He's having the time of his life. He's probably putting it on his face, which whatever. I will let him express himself. Just hopefully he doesn't crack me. Any of my <laughs> rare beauty blushes that crack so easy. Uh, Rue's sleeping, like I said, Dan's biking. And then I think the rest of the day, we're gonna go spend time at our friend's pool. And they're like family at this point. We're together all the time. And I mean, I've known them since I was a kid, like both. Did, like all the four of us we we're all swimmers together and grew up together so at this point we're just family and it's so nice to be around them it's just always good vibes so i'm gonna feel better and it's just a wave it's up and down and my like my dad said you gotta look at the grand scheme of things yes it's important to put your health first mental health all that stuff yes but also look at the grand scheme of things look at not like live in the future, obviously live in the present, but look at the fact that like in the future, this is not gonna seem like that big of a deal. And I will get out of it. And you will too if you're struggling and I'm here. My DMs are always open. Honestly, feel free to DM me on Instagram because I will most probably see it. Okay, let's go. Good morning, it is a new day. I was just about to go for a workout. Well, like not right the second. I'm waiting for Dan to get back from his. Rue is napping, Arky's at school. We kind of have started to get like a routine going, which is really nice. I feel like the summer was very, not chaotic. That's not the word I'm looking for, but like we didn't just didn't have a routine, didn't have a schedule. We had like specific activities every day that we had to do, but like it was very go with the flow, very easy, very chill. Everything that I wanted to do with a newborn because I just didn't want to be so rigid and strict with a schedule and a routine. But now that she's getting older, um, it is harder to just kind of just do whatever all day every day because then it really does affect her and then she's not happy. So obviously that doesn't make me happy. I want her to be happy. Our routine has definitely been a little bit more strict. Also the fact that Arky's now in school, we're very set with our times and every day during the week, we kind of do the same thing. So it is a little bit redundant, but it's nice because I am getting stuff done and it's really helping with my like mental health on sitting down and like making lists and focusing on them and getting tasks done. And then it helps me feel like I'm doing shiz and it's just very helpful. So one of the main things on my list was getting a new pair of glasses, eyeglasses, because I obviously have bad eyesight as you can see. <laughs> so, I've talked about it in vlogs before, but I am nearsighted, farsighted, I have astigmatism and a lazy eye. So like my eye will go in if I go too long without wearing my glasses. And I've had glasses since I was a child, but they're, the prescription is very, very thick. And these frames from Garrett Light I've had since 2016. I just like would repurchase these. Actually, I only repurchased them once, but I absolutely love them. I just feel like I'm over it, like the style, I've had the style now for so long, but I wanted something a little bit similar. I just didn't want the ones that had these pieces on the inside because I just feel like it was, it's like digs into my nose. For my prescription, I do have contacts that are not my exact prescription because my exact pres prescription would be like thousands of dollars for contact lenses and I just do not want to spend that much. So the eye doctor had told me to go off a little bit 
of the astigmatism and it would be half the price. So I had those in 2022 and I use them for like events, weddings, traveling, etc. But for now I'm like, I don't need that. I don't need contacts right now. I want new glasses, but I want a good pair and I want something similar to this, just not as big because then the lens itself is so much more expensive because it's bigger in the frame. Did I say I want new lenses? I wanted new frames. So I wanted something smaller, but this kind of vibe. I like the tortoise shell look. These are trendy right now. I don't know if they're gonna be trendy in years to come, but I did buy these when they were trendy in 2016. And eight years later, they're still going strong. So we'll see. But these were a splurge. These I think were five, almost $600 the frame. Very pricey, but frames can be very expensive. I did get a deal. Um, and then the, my lenses themselves are also very expensive. I'm very excited for this. These were 600 plus like tax and stuff. Obviously it's a lot more expensive, but I saw these on a few people's Instagram stories of these girls that I follow and I love their style. Um, Mimi, I think her name is Mimi. She's from Paris. I love her style. So I saw she linked these and then a few other like European influencers that I follow whose style I love. <gasps> you guys. I am so excited. Look how pretty. Are you ready? Are you ready? They are still the tortoise shell style. They do not have the little nose pieces on the end. I mean, they do, but they're not like the plastic ones. They're just like a set one. They're a lot smaller. These are actually blue light lenses. So if people want to buy these, I just want to like use them for the computer and stuff and don't need a prescription that's what they're for but i definitely need a prescription in these i'm gonna get the anti-glare lenses that's usually what i do and as much as i can i get them thinned out and then i will not have blue light lenses they're definitely a vibe definitely a style i feel like with my hair down they're gonna be so cute this thing i want to take it off but then again i'm like if i end up returning these I don't know. I'm just curious to know what they're gonna look like with my prescription because it always makes my eyes bigger because <laughs> my prescription is so strong. The downside to needing glasses is that when I put them on, I can't really see what they look like on me. So I'm gonna like watch back this clip. <laughs> but I think they're cute. They're very different. And trust me guys, I know, I just feel like with some makeup and some hair done, they're gonna be so stylish but I also want them to be cute when I'm just wearing them like every day. And I do have a rounder face. So sometimes these types of like lengthened glasses look more matrixy on me, but I will see what these look like. I'm gonna watch back this clip. Okay, so I definitely think I'm just more used to this type of vibe. I like don't know if I love them, but I wanna like get done up then wear them and see if that makes a difference. Also, I've tried on so many pairs of glasses in the past like four years that I just hate every single one. And those are the first ones I don't hate as much as the others, but I'm just so used to like the big ones. I just don't want to keep paying like $500 for my lenses because of the frame being so big. Also, I realized watching back that clip, the self tan that I had put on my face seeped into my freaking neck wrinkles and just accentuated them and it looks like I have a dirty ass neck and it clung to all of my dry patches and acne. So <laughs> will not be recommending this product at all. <sighs> I'm still on the hunt for a really good one. I really liked the Luxe Unfiltered one, but again, it would cling to my dry patches. I'm wondering, I'm curious if they made a new formula, but I also just have dry-ish skin. So maybe that's just the issue that I'm gonna have with any kind of self tan. No matter how much I exfoliate and do everything properly prior, my skin is just, it, there's just always an issue. Although my rosacea really isn't as bad as it has been, especially postpartum, I'm very, very pleased. I mean, it still is a bit red, but compared to how it was with Arkham, like my skin is so much better. And I think it's just because of the products I've been using over the course of my pregnancy and postpartum. I was also just, Getting some emails done while watching The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Currently on episode six, I think. Love her, love Taylor, love Michaela. Macy, I didn't like at the beginning and now I'm liking her more. 
but Demi and Taylor, they're my two favorites. I freaking love them. Jen is a cutie, but I hate her husband. And I'm just a Taylor fan, guys. Like, no one can ever make me hate her. The show is so good. I, it's like an addiction. Like I am trying so hard not to just binge it all and finish it because I want to extend it. When I like a show, I get very excited. So especially if I'm like up in the middle of the night pumping or something, it's just something to watch. So I'm very, very, I'm a big, big, big fan. I think they did a good job with the show. I know nothing about the Mormon culture and I still don't really know. They're, it's not really about that. It's just wives that are mormon or have been mormon or raised mormon i wasn't raised religious at all so when i hear certain things i'm like what the f that's like you are being judged so hard for something that is like so normal in my life that i can't even imagine being raised in that environment and like very grateful i wasn't and that i know that sounds like very shady and judgmental to like that religion but like i kind of am judging it because i'm like what the fuck I can't believe that's like, it's so misogynistic. It's wild. Like my brain does not compute that kind of thought. I don't know. I just, it's very culty to me and kind of freaks me out, but I love these girls and I respect them. And like, I respect anyone who wants to be spiritual or religious or whatever. Um, I just was never raised in that. So I like literally have no idea about any of it and it to be honest kind of scares me at times but as long as people are happy and being safe that's all that matters right right good morning it is a brand new day and it's a beautiful day outside it feels like summer again which is honestly really nice makes my mood happy and i did my makeup and hair so i'm gonna try out the glasses now and see what it looks like before we head out for the day we are going to um a festival in our town it's actually really fun the town is that's like kind of close to us we don't live in this town but we go there often and it reminds me of gilmore girls because it's like small town but there's a bunch of festivals and like it's just fun good vibes okay so here's the issue is this stupid glare is making it hard to see the vibe you know what i like it so there's not going to be really a glare when i get my prescription put in and I like that they stay on my face. They don't touch my cheeks, so it's not gonna rub off my makeup and it's not gonna slide down my nose consistently throughout the day. I think I may keep them, but I don't know. You tell me because I have a few, I think I have a week and a bit to decide if I wanna return them. I just have tried on so many glasses and I'm just so fed up of like hating every single one. And like I said, this is the first time that I don't actually despise them i just feel like kind of like a like a librarian or something i don't know i'm also wearing my tomo knit we are having a huge fall clear out sale um we will not be restocking any of the items we're trying to clear it out so that we can like come out with some new stuff which will take time like i've stated many times before this business is something that my sister and i put all of our money into so it's not just like a quick cash grab this is something that we're trying to do long term so it takes time but we just want to clear out as much stock as we can so that way we can come out with some more stuff. But yeah, I am obsessed with this knit. We are almost sold out in all the sizes in the Teddy Knits. This cardigan, um, we have a few sizes left. The black, we have some more. And then the skirts, we have a bit left as well. So if you want to check it out before the sale runs out, I'll have a link listed in the description. Um, if you buy one item, it's 20% off. Two items is 25 and three items is 35% off. So um, that will just help with like customs and shipping and all of that. And I'm excited for the event today. I need to make myself some lunch. I think I'm going to make myself a salad. I'm going to take these off now. <laughs> I've been doing the same. I don't like to say diet because that word is triggering to me, but it is a diet in the sense of like, I'm very strict on what I eat, eating at home, cooking my own meals, making sure I have enough protein. Like I'm very aware of what I'm consuming in a very healthy manner because I did this last year and it made me sleep better, feel better, move better, all around just like felt amazing and I did it with a nutritionist and I also just spoke about it with my therapist just because I have struggled before with like body dysmorphia and ED and it is ongoing struggle that I'll probably have the rest of my life but I'm, I was at least last year in a really good healthy space and I want to get there now, like postpartum, with all my hormones kind of going like this. So 
Salads are like my go-to because I get a ton of vegetables and nutrients and protein because I always add either chicken or shrimp or like something tuna like I just always have protein in my salads and then I do protein shakes as well last night We went for dinner at my neighbor's house and we had pizza It was so good And that's why I always say like everything in moderation because I never want to be too strict with myself because that's where it gets dangerous for me I know some people are not like that like my husband can literally eat whatever he wants for myself I feel the best when I'm eating at home and cooking myself. I just am finishing up my salad This is just like a bunch of different <laughs> lettuce kale cabbage carrots it's like a mixed green veggie thing with chicken, corn, um, a little bit of cheese, really good. And then I put out a little bit of like a spicy dressing. I make a huge bowl. I have my daughter on the monitor <laughs> and I'm watching a YouTube video. Packed up the cooler, well, packing up the cooler with just some drinks, some fruit, snacks when we're out so we don't have to spend as much money. Just make sure I have like bottles and everything. I think she might be waking up. It's hard to tell because she makes a lot of noise when she sleeps. There are so many times where like I'm about to go get her and then like I look on the monitor and she's passed out. And I was like, oh, I thought she was awake. And then I walk out back downstairs, hang out. 15 minutes later, it sounds like she's awake again. So I go up to go get her. She's sleeping. So now what I always do is I wait like a few minutes. Like she was just making noise. I wait a few minutes and she's literally passed out again. My friend explained it to me. The best thing you can do with your baby Unless they're like screaming, it's a different story, but like if they're making noises or crying a bit, picture yourself like you're sitting on the, on the toilet having diarrhea. You can't get up that instant. Like, what are you gonna do? So I pretend that's like what's happening. I like wait a few minutes and then if she's still not sleeping, I'm like, okay, she's awake. But most of the time she'll just fall back asleep or she is sleeping and she's just in active sleep. So that's a good rule if anyone wants to use that. Or like my mom said, when I was a toddler, and my sister was a baby, if my sister was crying in her crib, but I was in the bath, my mom was like, I can't leave my toddler in the bath to go get my baby. So she's gonna have to cry for a few more minutes while I finish up this bath quickly. And typically my sister would just like fall back asleep or she was sleeping or something like that. So it's different with your first baby because you don't know anything and any noise or grunt they make, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? But now having gone through that and knowing that like active sleep is a thing, I just feel a lot more confident and I know the difference in cries. Like I know her hunger cry. I know her like sad cry, like when she had her vaccines. And then I know her like sleep cry where it's not actually crying. It's just like making noises. She's just a very happy baby and she eats so well, she sleeps so well. I just feel very, very lucky. And I'm kind of just waiting for like the three to four month sleep regression. Cause I know we dealt with that really bad with Arky. Not every baby goes through it. Like I have some friends, their baby never went through that. So we'll see. But for the past week, she's been sleeping through the night, knock on wood. It's been really nice. Cause I've been like getting my sanity back. Even though Dan and I would always alternate, just knowing that like when we put her down at night at like 7.30, she sleeps until seven the next morning. So him and I can hang out, like especially if we put Arky down to bed around that time, like we're both putting the, the kids down at the same time and then they both sleep and we just know they're gonna sleep and him and I can just hang out on the couch and like watch Secret Lives of Mormon Wives or whatever show that it is at the time. It made me also wanna watch The Real Housewives of Salt Lake. I heard that's a really good show, so I kinda wanna watch that next. I need to get the rest of the stuff ready. I gotta get her ready. Dan said he's gonna be home in 20 minutes and we're gonna swap cars and head out, so. Fruit, fruit, some beers, some Coke Zeros. I'm gonna throw in some snacks like crackers, maybe some chips, I don't know. Um, pizza, because we have leftover pizza from last night. So, I mean, there's a lot. I don't know if, like, I think I might as well just bring it all. Dan eats a lot of pizza. <laughs> Wanna stuff his face. I have ice packs in there. Should I do this? Or, ooh, sun chips. This Arky's favorite. We're gonna be throwing one of these. We have peaches and cantaloupe in there. And so yeah, tons of stuff. Maybe I'll put, probably add a granola bar. Arky likes those as well. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. I got her diaper bag packed, cooler, my purse. Dan needs me to get socks for Arky and his socks are down here. And then I'm gonna get her up. Dogs probably should go out before we leave and everything else is done. Hi, Missy. 
So I have this long sleeve footy pajamas, pajamas, and then I have this cute like short sleeve one. I think it might be a bit big on her, but we will see. I'm gonna get her changed and see. I don't want her to be too hot. We have a fan, but just in case, you never know, right? Oh my gosh, guys, she's so cute. And she's the cutest little outfit. Mm. Hey, honey bunny. Oh, big girl. I love her so much, oh my goodness. Well, we're at Porch Fest, and it's nice because there's music everywhere. Band right there, two blocks away, another band. It's fun. Okay, so this is the end of the vlog. I clearly, Dan is just feeding and burping room. Clearly, there's just a lot going on, but I want to thank you for allowing me to have this safe space to feel like I can talk about these things because I know this is very common. It's not, not everyone will deal with this, but I've already opened up to people in my real life and I feel like just that on its own has been so nice to get that support. So online as well, I just know there's gonna be so many people that can relate to this. And yeah, I will keep you updated with how I'm feeling, but already this morning, things are a lot better. So I feel good and I love you guys and I will see you all in the next vlog. Bye.